Yep. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. So joining us, let's start off. Let's start off with a problem. Last thing we did was tunnels. Perfect. Next thing. Acceleration due to gravity. Which is nothing but small g. So the small g exactly what is this? Are those cams on? So when you have a planet here of mass m and radius r, so when you're standing here, the force experienced by this body is actually g m m by r square, isn't it? That is the actual force, the gravitational force. And what we are calling it, so g m m by r square is what we are calling as m into g. So this g ka value is nothing but g m by r square. So for any planet, the acceleration due to gravity Basically, this is acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the planet. It's not, not everywhere. So for Earth, if you take the values now, m is around uh, 16 to 10 power 24 kg. R is 6,400 kilometers approximately. The g ka value turns out to be 9.81 meter per second square. Now, if you do for something like uh, Jupiter, the g for Jupiter would turn out to be around 62 meters per second square. Means on Jupiter, gravity is six times more. And if you take something like sun, I think it is around 520 meter per second square. So if I take you and put you on a sun, your weight will be almost 52 times more. Something of this sort, depending on the masses and balls. The gravity is quite different on different planets. So when we say small g, small g, uh, instead of sun, let's take moon. Moon is more useful because in sun sun, you can't go is almost g by 6, 10 by 6. So <laughs> to compare to the Earth, the moon has only one sixth of the gravity. So that means on Earth, if you can jump one meter on moon, you can jump six meters. Yeah. That way. Clear? So, so basically, it will depend on how the mass of that planet. Hmm, it will depend on the mass and radius. Uh, you can write a variation of this formula. G m by r square. M can be written as density into 4 by 3 pi r cube. So if you want in terms of density, this is the formula. 4 by 3 pi g rho r. So it all depends on what is given. Did you give the mass and the mass and radius or did you give radius and density? Let's see her question, how they'll frame on this. Clear? Okay. Let's see our question. Sir, what was uh, that bigger giga value for? 6.67 into 10 power minus 11. So see, we have uh, two planets, mass m, radius r, 
mass 2m radius 2r we have two planets density r radius r density 2 rho radius 2r two different questions find the ratio of g on the surface is to one, okay. Try, try, I'll give you a minute. So can we show last slide once? Yes. What is the first one? Since here mass is given, so G is equal to G M by R square. So it is proportional to M by R square. So G1 by G2 will be M by R square by 2M whole square by 2R whole square. 2M by 2R whole square. 2 is to 1. Here G is 4 by 3 pi, this is the result now, G rho r. So this is proportional to rho into r. This is what I was saying. Depending on mass is given or density is given, approximately you can change it. Or you can actually get mass from here only. Here mass is rho into 4 by 3 pi r cube. Here mass is uh, 2 rho into 4 by 3 pi r cube. This is 16 m. No? You could have done that way also if you want to do it in mass. Nothing wrong. So G1 by G2 will be rho into r by 2 rho into 2 r. 1 is to 4. Easy? Clear. Next one. Mm, right. Varenda, Rishi, Rishi, how do you get 1 is to 1, right? Asini, you got it right. Amu, you got it right. Shaurya got it right. Harsh got it right. Yep. Next one. Variation of G. Case one with height. What happens if you go away from the Earth's surface? So let's say you're taking a height H above the surface here. This radius is R. So this guy will experience a force of G M M by the distance square R plus H whole square. This is what we are calling as M into G apparent or G effective also you can call it. So we get G apparent will be G M by R plus H whole square. This is the actual formula. Take out R common, so you get GM by R square into 1 plus H by R whole square. So G apparent will be GM by R square is nothing but the gravity on the surface by 1 plus H by R whole square. If H is much, much smaller than R. Example, let's say H is 50 kilometer and radius of the earth is 6,400 kilometers. So it's a very small thing. 
then we can use binomial approximation. So this formula becomes G apparent is G surface into one minus two H by R. That is your G apparent for small H. Now be very careful. Most people write, they goof up with this. They write this formula for every height. You need to understand whether the height is small or big and appropriately use this. Have a look at this. So this is, the, this is how G changes with uh, the height. Let me show you how they'll frame a question on this. In case you're wondering, how did I get that? One plus H by R whole power minus two, that becomes one minus two H by R. Binomial approximation that H is small. So this is valid only if H is much, much smaller than R. So be careful, don't use it anywhere. Clear? Let's see a question how they'll frame on this. So let's say we have a planet here, mass m radius r. So find, so we have two points here. One is point A here, whose height is r by 100. We have a point B here, whose height is 2r. So basically find the percentage change in gravity by what percentage the gravity changed at the height of, now be careful here, when someone says a height of meaning from the surface, if there's a distance from center is a lot, height from the surface is different, R by 100 and 2R, get this? Uh, someone, is thinking about percentage change in gravity is delta G by G into 100. There is a percentage change. Abhiksha, I could see you and then suddenly you became dark. So, uh, so also how to do this thing? Just the same thing, we just used it. So be careful, R by 100 is very small, 2R is not small. If you mix up the formulas, it will be a blunder. First one, because the height is same, G apparent will be G into one minus two H by R. So this will be G. So I can just uh, write this thing with this G apparent minus G will be minus two H G by R. So basically this is Delta G. 
So delta G by G will be minus 2H by R. So minus that is R by 100 into R, RR will cancel. So you want percentage, no? so percentage G will be just multiply 100 minus 2%. Minus indicates the gravity decreased by 2%. Right. So this implies G decreased by 2%. That's the meaning of minus. Sign. What about the other guy? The height is big. So you can't use the formula. So G by 1 plus H by R whole square. So if you put H is equal to 2R, that will become G by 9. So change in gravity will be final. G by 9 minus G by g so this will be thing <sighs> minus 8 by 9 so percentage gravity will be minus 8 by 9 into 100 so 8 by 9 is approximately point uh, eighteen. Uh, Nine eight seventy two eight zero eight eighty eight point eight eight percent are. Yeah, I can round it off to ninety ninety nine percent approximately. It is decreased by eighty eight point eight percent. All clear with this? Any doubts on this? Let's see this question in another way. So we have a planet here. So we have a compartment with pressure P naught and inside you have a barometer. So height of the barometer is 75 centimeters on surface of the earth. And the compartment pressure is P naught. Then you took this compartment to a height and you observe the height actually becomes 90 centimeters. Let's call it this is capital H. Height of the liquid column has become 90 centimeters. And this is the height of the liquid column. Find the height above which you have taken. Is the question making sense? So you have a barometer. First of all, you should do the barometer formula. Do you guys remember the barometer formula? What is the height of a barometer? P naught by rho g. P naught by rho g, na. So since the compartment is a closed compartment, P naught is not changing. What is changing? G is changing, na. So when you took it to a height, the gravity changed, and that is the reason height of the column changed. So the question here, tha, if the height of the column is become from seventy-five to ninety, up to what height have you taken it above the Earth's surface? Clear? So I can play these questions like this also. You know, we have a simple pendulum. Time period is T on the Earth's surface. At a height edge, the time period became 4T. At what height did you take? So wherever you see that G, you can bring every problem into it. At what height above the Earth? Time period becomes 3T. I hope you're getting the models are same. So wherever you see the formula, so time period of a pendulum ka formula is 2 pi root over L by G. So wherever you see G, everywhere you can take it and put it on the surface of the earth above the height of the earth. The models are similar.
think, think, think. So you can actually ask this kind of question in barometer, SHM, and surface tension. Surface tension we didn't do, but yeah. So, R by 12. So, we know H is equal to P naught by rho G. So, basically, H is proportional to 1 by G. So, H1 by H2 is G2 by G1. So, H1 is 75 centimeter. H2 became 90 centimeter. G, this G2 is G apparent and uh, G is G. So, basically, you got G apparent is 5G by 6 now. Isn't it? The gravity has become 5G by 6. So, G apparent formula is G into 1. Remember, the change is not smaller. Change is big. It has changed by almost 1, 6, 3, 16% change that is. You can't use an approximate formula. GG will cancel. You get 1 plus H by R whole square is 6 by 5. So, H by R is equal to root 6 by 5 minus 1. So, H is equal to R into root over 6 by 5 minus 1. That's your answer. Check. Is this clear, everyone? Uh, I got disconnected. Why if it just crashed? Is this clear? Where did you get? Where did I get caught, got cut? Actually, did I explain everything and got cut, or did I mess up somewhere? This part was clear, right? I'm lagging now. Weird. Hello. You want to hear me? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Um, is my voice lagging or you can hear me? Yeah. You can hear me, right? Clearly? Yes. Yes, sir. I'm just answering. Yeah. My Wi-Fi is down. I get to GeoCosm. So basically, we got G apparent is 5G by 6. The main thing, what I was saying, right? If you look at the change, it is 1, 6. 16%. 16% is not small. So you can't use the approximate formula. You have to use the, the general formula. Clear? Okay, next one. Mm, yeah. 
So next thing is with depth. So what if you go into the earth? Let's say you have gone into the earth where depth city. So what is the formula here for inside? So this distance will be R minus D. So the field ka formula is G M small r by R cube, which is nothing but G M R minus D by R cube. The force will be mass into field, which we are writing as M into G apparent. So M cancels off. So indirectly field is nothing but apparent gravity only. So this is G M by R square into one minus D by R. So this is nothing but G into one minus D by R. It's a linear function. Unlike with height, right? You don't have all those stunts. You can directly say it is one minus D by R. So whenever you're going into the earth, the gravity actually decreases and becomes zero in the center. This is the upper gravity with the apparent depth. So every problem that we did with the height, you can do the thing, same thing here also. Here I will say the body is taken into the earth and the gravity became half, find the depth and so on. Have a look at this. Copied. Next thing. Case three. Due to the rotation of Earth. So whenever the Earth is rotating, and if you're actually standing somewhere here. So what happens is you experience gravity and G, it will be always toward the center of the earth. You also experience centrifugal force, which is M omega square R. Now be careful that R is actually radius of this circle, isn't it? You're rotating about the center of this circle. You're not rotating about center of the earth if you're not on equator. And this angle is theta. This theta is called latitude angle. Co-latitude. You can call it whatever you want. What is this co-latitude? At the equator, theta is zero. At the north pole, theta is 90. Somewhere in the middle, theta is 60, like this. That is the meaning of latitude angle. Okay. So, and this component will be, so this person standing here, and this is theta. So this circle, which we got, This is R, this is theta. So this radius will be R cos theta. So you'll observe the components will be mg minus m omega square small r the cos theta. It will have two components here. M omega small r cos theta and omega square sine theta. So this is your mg apparent. M cancels off. 
and we get g apparent is equal to g minus omega square small r will be again r cos theta cos square theta be careful it is not just cos theta it will be cos square theta so what is the m omega square r sin theta doing it's doing nothing they are just attack there's no one to balance their actually okay that means everyone on the earth is not towards the center we are actually bent at an angle so we don't construct buildings like this the resultant will be like this so we build the buildings like this but that is too small to notice but actually everything on the earth is at a slight angle is not towards the center check it out Yeah, we are in circular motion, right? Obviously, Earth is going about itself. Clear. Next thing. <clears throat> Let's see how they'll frame a question on this. Simple one. With what omega the Earth should rotate so that the gravity becomes zero on the equator? That will be a simple question. Find omega if g apparent on the equator is zero. Second thing, if you take a point A on the equator, if you take a point B at a height h above the north pole, B is at height h above north pole. Assume h is much much smaller. Find h if the gravity at A is equal to gravity at B. Two questions. Get them. The B part. First one is easy. Direct formula substitution. This is a formula, na? G apparent and theta is zero at the equator. So G apparent will be G minus omega square r cos square theta should be zero. Theta is also zero here. Omega is root G by r. So if the Earth rotates this fast, we are going to fly away. मतलब mm, exactly won't fly away. We'll be just on the surface. Actually, we'll be just floating on the surface. You won't be in contact with the ground anymore, na? No? What will do the second part? Try that. Why is there cos square theta? Because there are two cos thetas. You are not listening when I was deriving the number. 
m omega square r r is r cos theta but the centrifugal force is not towards the center centrifugal force is this way mg is this way so centrifugal force ka component aayega uska ek aur cos theta aayega there are two cos thetas one because of radius and one because of the component hmm hmm how to do this thing on the equator so you are saying ga is equal to gb so it will be g into minus omega square r gb will be g into 1 minus 2h by r isn't it you just use the height ka formula and the rotation ka thing so gg will cancel you get minus omega square r is equal to minus 2gh by r we so get h is equal to omega square r square by 2g have a look at that easy clear next thing Yeah, this is one way of asking questions. That's a variation due to the gravity. Next thing, satellites. So, what are satellites? So, satellite right is simply any object right that is rotating around a planet in a stable orbit. any object that revolves in a stable orbit so generally stable orbit right it has the meaning is it's bounded orbits that is the meaning of stable what are bounded orbits negative energy so total energy should be negative such orbits are called bounded best example energy of an electron in hydrogen atom minus 13.6 cv it's bounded total energy is negative example of bounded orbits right it should be closed orbits basically bounded closed example circle and ellipse hyperbola parabola all these are unbounded orbits so if you have a planet here mass m let's say from the center we have a satellite rotating in a circle of radius r So consider M going in a circular orbit. So we will study in the portion we have only circular orbits. Ellipse they can ask you in advance by giving something. So we will do elliptical orbits also. The how to work on that. But unlike we really don't have too much in that also. But we will see few models. So. 
it will become two mathematical if you try to study elliptical orbits. Consider a mass m. Going in a circle of radius r. So if you look at the forces here, we have a centrifugal force mv square by small r, the gravitational force g mm by r square. So if I equate them g mm by r square is equal to mv square by small r, you end up with v is equal to root over g m by small r. This is the velocity of the satellite in that orbit. The time period is nothing but the circumference 2 pi r by v. This is nothing but 2 pi r by root g m by r. This will be r to the power of 3 by 2. This is the time period of formula for a satellite. 2 pi root over g m, the radius to the power of 3 by 2. r is the distance from center. Have a look at this. So in that binary star system also these two forces are there. Binary star system may how many are moving? Or two. Yeah, how many are moving? Uh, one. So you can use it? No, but the uh, derivation means the force and M among us well. Two forces. Why well, yeah, no. yeah. Have a look at this everywhere. The other two formulas, velocity of an uh, satellite in an orbit and the time period in the orbit. Clear with this. So if I just put down this formulas again, so the velocity of the orbit is root over g m by r. If satellite is very close to the surface, then this velocity is called orbital velocity. Then it becomes root over g m, g m by capital R. If you multiply and divide by R square, this formula becomes root g r. So for Earth, the V orbit is approximately 7.92 kilometer per second. So if something wants to go around the Earth on the surface level, when it's a surface level, maybe 10, 15 kilometers also, you need a speed of 7.2 kilometers per second. You're going pretty fast actually. And generally all the satellites that we launch, right? They're not too far. We don't launch more anything more than uh, 200, 300 kilometers. International Space Station is at a height of 600 kilometers. So basically it costs you a lot of fuel in order to launch something uh, to a higher orbit. It's very expensive. So people just love to launch, you know, satellites, even that ISRO, whatever we launch is all 200, 300 kilometers only. Everything orbits at that height. You require a lot of fuel to send. So that is the reason in it is very expensive to launch something to moon. You don't directly go to the moon. We actually use a concept, you know, uh, to get a, there is a movie also these people made out of it, the Mangalyan or something, remember Akshay Kumar? Uh, there is a concept actually. It takes time, but uh, it works. So when the satellite is uh, orbiting at a particular point, if you switch on the engine, switch off the engine, you can make it gain more energy than just keeping the engine on throughout. So there is a, something like that. Later on, I'll tell you what it is. But they made the movie out of it and they made fun of it. So okay. 
anyway they have to just you know make it glamorous no one really cares about physics there so this is one so then we have something called a geostationary orbit so what is this geostationary orbit if you keep any satellite in this orbit right you will think it is stationary from the earth so basically the time period of a satellite is equal to the time period of the planet that means if you have a geostationary satellite for the earth every time you see in the sky the satellite is always there now if you can see uh, the only problem is so for earth the time period should be 24 hours it should rotate with the earth. so if you use the formula 2 pi root over g capital m r power 3 by to don't forget this m is actually mass of earth it's not mass of satellite put 24 hours there this r ka value actually comes out to approximately 42000 km or uh, the height from the surface is approximately 36000 km meaning you need to keep the satellite at a height of 36000 km orbit then it will go in a, it looks like stationary Are you getting this? So it's pretty far actually. So what people do, right? Normally, if you launch a satellite to a height of only three hundred, four hundred kilometers, the problem is the satellite is rotating so fast, right? Let's say by the time India rotates from here to here, the satellite is only gone gone here. Means you can use the satellite only for a certain amount of time, right? Every day, you don't have access twenty four into seven. You can't access the satellite. when the satellite is you know up to a certain region when it is here up to this point you can use a satellite then because the signals will go in a straight line so once the satellite crosses here you can't use it so what people do they don't launch a single satellite they launch multiple satellites this is the main concept of gps so when this satellite is going out of orbit another satellite comes into the orbit so you always have one satellite above you to have access this is actually more cheaper than actually launching a satellite into a you know a stationary orbit launching multiple satellites is more better and you can actually use this satellite with other countries right you can let's say you have a tie up with a country like france or something you can tell them see when our satellite is on top of you use it but for that you pay rent right so that way you can give satellites on rent people love to have it and when you don't when they don't listen to you you cut off the satellite that's what us does that's what they did during the kargil war during the kargil war when india and pakistan fighting the entire indian army battalions right the gps was actually provided by the us the companies so during the middle of the war uh, us said you know stop the war and all indian said we don't care get lost and they just cut off the gps supply literally all the army units were stranded in the middle of the mountains without any communication you can't have wireless communications in between mountains you have to use satellite communications you must have seen movies right the hero climbs on top of a hill and then sends a signal you basically you're sending a signal to the satellite directly so once these people cut off literally indian army units were literally blinded and then then people decided yaar we should not depend on these kind of things or anything and isro ka funding was increased so if you see na indians right if you say we won't give you and you take away from them we become very good at it now we launch satellites isro right like one tenth of a cost no one can do that do you see this movie uri in uri movie there's a scene room but this guy calls up and says you know the isro guy he calls up the isro you know thing and he'll tell that guy you know uh, i need a satellite you know on top of that location 24 into 7 for the next one week or something do you remember that thing and this guy calls up and says ha you know you send the direct feed to the army headquarters if you can remember that thing so imagine you know you can say chalo use the satellite for two weeks as you want it is always there for you that is something else so military satellites 
you have communication satellites you have weather satellites you have multiple types of satellites all satellites are not of same type you can have spy satellites you are just watching what the other country is doing right if things work out you can even put one or two nuclear missiles on the satellite just in case just in case <laughs> right so that's a geostationary orbit now for satellites right we have a small catch you can't launch a satellite however you want this is a big problem actually so every country that tries to launch a satellite right we are actually having a lack of space any satellite that you launch the orbit ka center should be the center of the earth that's the first condition to launch a satellite reason we'll see the center of the orbit should be the center of the planet this actually restricts a lot so even though you know the space looks like infinity you can put thousands and millions of satellites uh, this actually creates a problem we are actually limited reason see if your satellite is going like this what is the problem how is the gravitational force this way how is the centrifugal force this way they can't balance right if a satellite is going this way mv square by r these are unbalanced forces satellite won't be in orbit it will fall down you can never launch a satellite like this it doesn't work got the problem so that means now you are restricted you can only have centers like this thing second if you are putting geostationary it is even more messed up geostationary orbit must be in equatorial plane that means if you are launching a geostationary orbit that satellite ka orbit must be the equatorial plane basically the same rotation of omega why think about it if you are rotating like this earth is rotating like this do you think the satellite will be always on top of the you know country you are going at an angle right you will go behind up for some time it won't look stationary anymore are you getting it that means we are restricted so geostationary orbit right there is only one orbit for all the countries so if you launch your geostationary orbit here above india and someone launches above here for some reason something happens there is a high chance they can collide with each other the whole thing is a mess you just won't lose your one satellite all the satellites in that orbit this debris or this thing right will just sweep it away and it will destroy all the satellites so almost if you see like decade two decades back right us had a huge number of satellites i think around 20, 2000s mein 2000 year all the countries in the world right meaning all the satellites in for all the countries in the world except us were around 380 only us had more than 440 satellites at one point of time this is before 2000 after that nasa ka funding decreased they were not really that interested they became busy doing all nonsense stuff that was a different story is this clear everyone orbits clear now if you have a satellite you want to cover the entire planet we need at least three satellites to cover the entire planet Uh, but three it will become actually more expensive if you use three because you have to put them at a much higher orbit so for a military gps right you require 24 satellites the accuracy of this military gps is so good imagine they can see your car ka number plate can you imagine a terrorist is going in some hilly area in iraq and these people are scanning from the top and they can see is car ka plate number so that is how no how they you know who is there and what and that is how they launch missiles and finish them off so basically this guy will be like kind of an encircle kind of thing you can have three satellites to cover the whole planet you need minimum three 
Let's say we have a planet here, mass and, and radius are. Instead of a particle, let's say we have a a rod, mass and the radius. This is a proper advanced question, right? This entire rod is rotating with omega. How is this rod rotating? The rod is rotating such that it is always radial. So in NASA's website, you will find this thing. This is called space elevator. It's a concept which is quite possible. So the whole idea is, you can have a kind of a satellite kind of thing which is rotating in the space. Let me show you how it would look. There, it kind of looks like this. So the whole idea, you know, is what? So when this guy is rotating, the centrifugal force will balance the attraction. Means you actually need don't have anything to you know keep it on this thing. The centrifugal force will balance the attraction. So if you can rotate with a certain speed, this whole thing will remain in equilibrium just above the Earth's surface. Is that making sense? So then the idea is you can you know. Send everything, all the materials that you require through this elevator. You can assemble the rockets here, then you can launch rockets from here. It saves you a lot of space, lot of you know. The biggest problem we have is taking things from the Earth and putting in the outer space. It requires a lot of fuel, very expensive. But with the space elevator, right, things change a lot. Then add is that? No, it is too expensive and too. Like I said, na, we humans have more busy things to do. Let's ban this movie. Let's do that. Let's go and eat McDonald. We are not interested in all these kind of technological advances. A time waster, sir. Who is going to do it? Na, it is more interesting to go and watch a cat video. Cat fighting with cat, maza aata hai. One million views. Cat fighting with dog, ten million views. Cat and snake fighting, hundred million views. Cat fighting with human, and human falls, one billion views. So that is how we would be. That is what we are. You put a video on space elevator and the human advancement in technology. Maximum two thousand views will go out of it. Maza nahi aata hai usme. Kisko chahiye? We are more interested in looking at their bloody cat ka videos, funny videos. Yeah. So that is the kind of civilization we are right now. So it always happens. Humans are like this. So if you see right, it is like stupidity. With uh, time, you can say it always goes like this. So you can, the lesser the stupidity means you're more intelligent. So it, it is it is always like this. We become more and more and more stupid. Then there is a line of called extinction ka line. You touch this line, you die. You you go extinct. So humans have this capability. Okay, when things go very bad, right? Something happens to humans. As a whole community, right? We suddenly start changing. We do drastic things, and whenever this point reaches, right, millions of people die. Things get wiped out, and then we suddenly change. We become intellectually very smart, very smart, very smart, and then once we reach a certain point, right, we chill out too much, and then again we go towards extinction. Maza aata hai humko. We just can't be, you know, intellectual people. So the problem is. This line which we got right, we are getting closer and closer and like this. At some point, you are going to touch that line and it will be. I'm gone. 
if you're thinking sir is it really possible think about it if i give you one month time to prepare for the exam and you start studying if you have one month for the exam to prepare when do you start studying itna kyun if i give you one week exam to write my test when do you write 90% of you will write one day before there are some great people you know 11 o'clock deadline to 10:55 ko they open the paper to write there i forget about you know the entire earth ka thing we can see in our own class only this is exam ka deadline we try to push it some people forget about the exam only next day they ask me sir can we write it now that is we cross the extinction line so let's see that way okay so what the concept here is since the rod is rotating around the earth the centrifugal force on the rod balances the attraction force between the rod and the the planet is that making sense so here a rod rotates around the planet such that it is always radial radial meaning it is always passing through the center and just above the surface it is not touching the earth just above the surface find time period find the time period of one rotation and we have reached such a state right we humans are so stupid if you want to make a space elevator right and uh, imagine you decided to make a space elevator and if you put the pitch like this if you tell the people like this if we construct a space elevator we can launch rockets you know from outer space more easily we can go to other planets and we can get more resources and we can make sure humans will live longer no one gives a damn but if you say like this if you put a space elevator we can sell apartments at a higher floor you'll get a premium view of the earth bloody you should see the next day powai thane everywhere you'll start getting ads normally what do you say sea view forest view mountain view no this is earth view <laughs> earth view moon view sun view this is this is the kind of that is the thing real estate companies real estate companies will fund this project and they'll build this we are not going to build this for the sake of you know human advancement in technology real estate ke liye matlab definitely kar payenge the biggest problem right why we can't construct this thing is one is cost and second thing is human commitment wo theek hai but uh, technologically we have few problems a lot of problems actually first thing is the material itself this thing when you are actually have to tie it to the earth somewhere you just can't leave it in space when you tie this the kind of tension it generates the pressure is almost 100 giga pascals 100 giga is around uh, 10 power 9 mega is 10 power 6 giga is 10 power 9 pascals So the strongest materials we have right now is a mild steel which can withstand five giga pascals. We know a material which can withstand one twenty giga pascals, which is carbon nanotubes, Buckminster Fullerene. I heard it in chemistry, I suppose. That material can withstand up to one twenty giga pascals. The problem: this length is thirty six thousand kilometers. The longest carbon nanotube we made so far is fifteen centimeters so far. yeah so and it is pretty expensive so we have multiple problems that way and if you want to build this you can't build it in one country the entire world has to go together and do it so but i think can't bear that much tension kya hua the earth can't bear that much tension sir earth is pretty big ray right? diagram is looking little awkward if you really build a space elevator it looks like a joke you are just ignoring the earth earth is too huge earth can't bear its own tension and where will you build this from tell me where do you get the materials to build this from earth only earth. and you are saying earth can't bear its own tension how do you do this thing let's get back to the question anyway space elevator is a different story though but i think you know the next extinction line right when we reach that something that should happen right we really want to advance aliens should come and attack us 
that is the only time we humans will actually think about you know we'll stop watching this bloody cat videos and do something about technology and science because if you see na humans right we can't live in peace wo hamare dna mein nahi hai you getting it we always need something to fight i think i told you this before we always need something to fight if you go back like 1000 years back in india you know people were fighting like you know who is great lord shiva or lord vishnu can you imagine people were literally kings were fighting wars to prove who is big and then what happened people got bored are yaar two gods maza nahi yaar then christianity came right muslims came now it is interesting more better war crusades christian versus muslims right so we are fighting bigger wars religion versus religion then we had world wars why do you think people had world wars people are bored kuch kaam nahi hai you are just sitting there you can't be patient let's go and fight a war now people got bored actually now see russia and ukraine are fighting war from one year anyone cares no one cares mm-hmm. that is a thing you know we need bigger and bigger things just imagine you know tomorrow the entire world everyone become same color everyone become same religion everyone is just one religion one thing everything we will start fighting you know which is a better burger mcdonald or you know burger king that that is how stupid we are getting <laughs> we need a reason to fight there's already a debate on that on the internet already <laughs> so that way so now we need something bigger to matlab kya hona chahiye if aliens come and attack earth then we will say aliens versus humans did you see we will unite because you know abhi isse zyada maza aayega na human human bore ho gaya we need something bigger alien versus human fight let's see what will happen and uh, recently i think last week right people have detected some kind of uh, objects are entering into the solar system and this is not the first time they have observed multiple uh, you can search it online see normally what happens that whenever something is entering entering into solar system you can have two types of orbits like i said a closed orbit or an unbounded orbit so if someone is entering from outside and if it's a natural object it should be having a path of an hyperbola or a parabola because it has to go back to infinity but these people observed these orbits right they are not circular they are not elliptical they are not hyperbola parabola nothing these things are completely artificial orbits meaning they have engines of their own which are actually moving them around and this was detected something like 5 6 years back they did detect few of them and recently they observed the activity has increased more so more and more of these things are actually entering solar system so aliens might not be that far we might see them in our own lifetime we can take photos with them then so we need aliens for that only na aliens aayega to 10 rupees photo alien ke sath Hmm. Definitely, we will destroy the Earth like that. Only aliens will come to the Earth. First thing, these idiots will go jumping on the alien, taking photographs. Alien will think we are attacking. It will go back and report. This is species is a very dangerous species. They jump on you. They take. They put. They flash some light on you, and they are trying to hypnotize me and they are trying to harass me. So this is a very dangerous species. We should eliminate them. So, yeah. Which we are sucked. Let's see. Sure, let's get back to space elevator. How to do this thing? So we got a rod which is rotating uh, around the planet here with omega. So the question is, find the omega so that the time period basically. Let me help you here. Try, try, try. I'll give you a minute. Think about it. See, the idea is this thing. Ah, huh? I'll just show you the basic idea. You try from there. Let's say if we take a rod here at a distance x from the center. Take a small piece dx. What are the forces on this? The centrifugal force will be d omega square x, and the gravitational attraction will be g m d m by x square. Is that making sense? So all the centrifugal forces will be equal to all the gravitational forces. The net centrifugal force on the rod should be equal to the net gravitational force on the rod. Got it? Try. I'll give you two minutes from here. Just try and get some water and go.
any answers others can go on because we can, we can apply at the sector of force now it is linear what centrifugal force na but gravitational force nahi hai na so here what we get net centrifugal force is equal to the net attractive force so this will be integral dm omega square x is equal to integral gm dm by x square if you look at the rod here rod ka length is r means x ka value is going from r to 2r So dm is nothing but lambda into dx. So this will be lambda omega square integral x dx. Let us go from r to two r. Is equal to gm lambda integral dx by x square. Limits will go from r to two r. Lambda goes off. Omega square x square by two. Limits from r to two r. Gm minus one by x. Limits are from r to two r. So omega square. This will be three r square by two. This will be g m by two r. Two two cancels off. Omega will be root over g m by three r square. That's your omega. Time period will be two pi by omega. So if this rod rotates with this omega, you can keep it in the air radially. The rod will not go away from the. It will not fall onto the. It will not collapse. Again, we are keeping a very simplified version. There will be an air resistance. Lot of other factors also. But yeah, this is the starting point. So we need something of bigger drive because if you can actually do this, imagine we can start building, you know, space elevators. We can start connecting them with this thing. The Earth will have its own ring, and for some reason we feel like you know the Earth is going to get destroyed. We can disconnect it and we can take the ring and go to some other planet. Isn't it? Just like Saturn has its own rings, you can have your own rings. So, you know, if you disconnect it, the rods are dependent on the Earth, right? Ha! Huh, you have to have own rockets again. The ring won't go on its own. You have to put some thrusters and then take it away from the Earth. There is one super sci-fi weird movie that I saw, meaning scientifically weird, but. They tried some Chinese movie. The uh, movie's name is The Earth or something. For some reason, right, the Earth is becoming a supernova explosion. The Earth is becoming a red giant. So the people on the Earth decide, you know, let's take Earth away from the sun. Totally weird concept. <laughs> Getting it? So these people, right, they construct something called Earth engines, which are multiple rockets on the Earth, thousands of them. So they create thrusters and they take the Earth away from the sun. you know uh, graphics and all movie was great to see but conceptually it was pretty weird so while traveling away from the earth right for some reason it gets caught in the gravity of the jupiter the jupiter starts pulling away the entire atmosphere of the earth alag hi concept tha clear with this have a look at this see some unknown artificial objects are entering the solar system no one cares people are busy thinking salman khan abhi kya kar raha hai that's what comes in the front front page of newspaper this kind of stupid you know this stuff will come somewhere there right now the most important thing that we need to do is create nuclear fusion reactors nuclear fusion that is an excess of energy without that we are not going to do anything we'll go extinct in another 100 years you know when i say this what people feel 100 years na by that time i won't be there anyways chalta hai did you get that feeling <laughs> that is a <the> problem <laughs> that is a problem 
There is one in France that building it, right? They'll complete it by 2035. Complete nahi hoga. They're just still making it. Abhi dekh na, 2035 tak wait karna hai. 15 years. Matlab, itna important kaam kya hai hamare paas abhi? Instead of working on that. ट्स satellite a and satellite b this is going in a orbit of radius you know small r and this is going in a radius of 8r two satellites rotate orbit in radius r and data find ratio of time period and find relative angular velocity find ratio of time period that's an easy one i'll do one thing wait let this mass also let it be let's find the ratio of time period one is to 16 near eh forgot kya 2 pi is root g m r to the power of 3 by 2 so t is proportional to r power 3 by 2 so t a by t b ha uh, might be 16 Will be r by 8 r whole to the power of 3 by 2. R r will cancel. This will be 1 by 2 cube now. 2 cube by 3 by 2. How much is that? That is not a good number, right? Hmm. I should have given 4 r I guess. Then it would have been 1 by 8. Okay, I'll just give it like this. 2 to the power of 9 by 2. Or you can simply say two per four, na. One by sixteen root two. Easy. Check. The next thing. Energy of a satellite. So we got the velocity of a satellite, time period of a satellite. Next thing is energy of a satellite. so the total energy of a satellite will be potential energy plus kinetic energy so when this guy is going in a orbit of radius r velocity is v which is root gm by r which we derived the potential energy will be minus gm m by r plus kinetic energy is half mv square the result is important right if you substitute that gm m by r plus half m v square this turns out to be minus g m m by 2 r so see this is the formula total energy of a satellite is minus g m m by 2 times the radius potential energy is minus g m m by r kinetic energy is plus g m m by 2 r so examine the last few this question find the ratio of total energy is to potential energy is to kinetic energy this ratio will be minus 1 is to minus 2 is to plus 1 check 
this is the same ratio you have even in you know uh, the electron in a yeah, atomic structure the electron in a hydrogen like atom if you try to plot this graph examine the last like this can you tell me which line is which graph the green black red which is potential which is kinetic which is total green is kinetic green is kinetic because it is always positive na no? between red and black black is total energy mm potential is bigger na no? more negative the red is potential black is total got it so all will be hyperbolas all right Sir, in this case, total energy is not constant. It is changing with R, na. Total energy in the orbit is constant. We are plotting energy versus R graph. R is the distance from the center. Clear? Any doubts on this? Next thing, escape velocity. What's an escape velocity? The minimum velocity required to escape the planet. Minimum speed on the surface. To escape the planet to infinity. so if you're launching with v at an angle theta and let's say it goes off to infinity this is state 1 this is state 2 so energy in state 1 is equal to energy in state 2 to initial energy will be half mv square minus g m m by r surface of the earth infinity may it is zero we get v is equal to root 2 g m by r this is your v escape this can be also written as root over 2 small g r and if you observe one thing it is independent of theta it doesn't matter at what angle you project it will always go to infinity depends only on the magnitude there so for earth this value is around 11.2 km per second so if you want something to escape from the earth you require a speed of 11.2 km per second now if you remember uh, remember this vrms velocity root over 3 rt by m m is the molecular weight so for a gas like hydrogen and helium molecular weight is very small right so they have very high speeds that is the reason you won't find helium in the atmosphere all this must have escaped this is the reason why moon doesn't have an atmosphere because the moon ka gravity is so weak the escape velocity is so less all the gases have escaped the moon ka surface so the first condition to have an atmosphere is that the planet should have enough gravity to keep the atmosphere stuck to the planet so the normal speed of oxygen molecules is around 2 to 3 km per second on the surface of the earth that is the reason oxygen and uh, nitrogen all these things don't escape into the atmosphere but helium and hydrogen escapes now if this we escape velocity which we got as root 2 gm by r if this is less than c where c is speed of light let's say greater than equal to c means what we get r should be less than equal to 2 gm by c square so if the radius of the planet becomes 2 gm by c square this thing is called square style radius i think it's a german scientist name this is a condition for black hole this becomes a black hole so if a star planet anything if the 2 gm by c square if this condition is satisfied if the radius of the planet is less than equal to 2 gm by c square it becomes a black hole this is a condition for black hole so just to give an estimate okay how big is you know how small is this radius if you take the entire earth entire earth and if you compress it and put it in a tennis ball it becomes a black hole if you take the entire earth and put it inside a tennis ball it becomes a black hole 
that is how dense a black hole is. Clear with this escape velocity? The last thing. So it's like three. higher density attraction force increases. Coming in. Higher the density attraction force also increases. Yeah. So. So consider a particle. Projected, sorry, I keep your mic on mute. Tangentially with speed u. So case one, let's say you're projecting it like this. So if your speed u is less than v orbit, remember v orbit is root gr. So if you project anything on the earth with less than v orbit, this actually comes and collides on the planet. This is actually an ellipse. So this will be the focus and the orbit is actually an ellipse. Remember we say parabola normally, it is parabola under the assumption G is constant. So whatever you throw on the earth surface they actually take para elliptical paths. So whenever you're launching nuclear missiles from one point to another point or anything, ICBMs, if you ever heard about them, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, they do have rockets, but kind of they put an elliptical path at one point of time. So the center of the planet is the focus of the ellipse. So which there are two focuses. One of the center, one of the focus is center. If you project exactly u is equal to v orbit. You go in a proper circle. That is the meaning of orbit, orbital velocity. Case three, your velocity is between V escape and between V orbit. You will go in another ellipse. This time you won't collide though. You will just miss the planet again. You launch it here. You'll go in another ellipse. So this will be one focus and the other will be out on the focus. You have two focuses for an ellipse. Again, you get an ellipse. If you give exactly V escape velocity. Parabola. We can actually prove this mathematically by using the eccentricity. It's with respect to you. We don't have in the portion. We don't need it. It's too complex and mathematically involved. If you're projecting with you greater than V escape velocity, hyperbola. Clear with the shapes. So anything less than V escape is an ellipse, but you'll collide with the planet. Exactly V orbit circle. Between V orbit and escape, you won't collide with the planet, but you'll go in an ellipse. Equal to VSK parabola greater than VSK hyperbola. These are all the trajectories. We see there's a lot of theory there. Sir, in case three, sir, uh, will it collide back with our? No, it will not collide. Or it's it a much continue. bigger ellipse. It will continue to keep going forever. Okay, so it will go on uh, in a bigger ellipse. Yeah. Okay. Clear with the trajectories. So go through and all sir, this theory once. Right? Ah, Rebona Shaudia. Answer in the case of four of mm. if it is uh, case five, sir, why it will come back means if it is greater than BSK because now it has escaped the gravitational force. Why, when did it, it will come back? No, sir, uh, in the parabola, it reaches the maximum point, then it turns now. So, turns to why should it come back? Parabola, parabola is a closed figure, okay? No, means why it is turning back now because uh, at that it point. Turn back. No it is a satellite which it will turn back. It doesn't like me. What is your problem? It could be anything, right? Just draw some random figure. You can draw any parabola you want. 
you want to draw parabola it does not turn back uh, there happy i like turning parabolas that's it just a thing parabola clear so there with that we'll wrap up for the day so next class when we meet right we'll do few problems on satellites and we'll do kepler's laws so we will wrap up uh, gravitation in the next class and then let's see maybe gauss law a little intro i'll do but gravitation is almost done i think finish off your electrostatics first i know there's a lot of work piled up i'm telling you this chapter will be piled up because you seeing now models itna kuch different nahi tha you could have done all these things there also but yeah satellites is a little different ठीक है विद दिस विल रैप अप फॉर द डे एचसीवी यू कैन नॉट डू अप टू जस्ट लेट मी टेल यू लास्ट टाइम कितना बोला था मैंने यू कैन डू अप टू 30 30 32 या 32 यू कैन डू यू कैन एक्चुअली फिनिश ऑफ एवरीथिंग आई गेस या यू कैन एक्चुअली फिनिश ऑफ एवरीथिंग बिकॉज़ कैपलर लॉस आर नॉट देयर इन एचसीवी Elliptical orbit motion is not given in HCV. That is additional. You can finish off full HCV gravitation. So I think you should keep a deadline next Saturday, one week time, and try to finish it off. Again, when I say finish it off, uh, examples, object one, object two, and exercise. Everything. If you are doing HCV, you are doing DC bandai. Finish off level one and level two. Everything. Stick to one book. Don't do multiple things. You want to do DC bandai, do it. I don't care. But complete it. Don't touch another book. You are doing your pace ka booklet. Chalega. Complete the pace booklet. Don't touch anything else. Finish one book and then go to the second one. Maximum two books. Don't exceed that. Clear? We'll wrap up with this. So any doubts, anything, stay back and ask. Also free to leave. So take care.